How do you take an open source project like WordPress that was never meant to generate revenue, use it to create a company worth $7.5 billion and help the platform power 43% of all websites, all while working fully remote? Ask Automatic founder and CEO Matt Mullenweg, who positioned his company as the hidden force behind projects like WordPress.com, Akismet, WooCommerce and more. Join us as we break down Automatic to find out how it emerged from an open source project, how it found relevant products it could monetize, and how it plans to power the majority of the web. The story of Automatic starts back in 2003, when its founder, Matt Mullenweg, who was just 19 years old at the time, and an early adopter of blogging, noticed that the blogging software he used hadn't been updated in months. He described the issue in a blog post, saying that my logging software hasn't been updated for months and the main developer has disappeared and I can only hope he's okay. What to do? The post got the attention of a few developers and together they began working on what would become the open source blogging software WordPress, officially launching it in May 2003. And uh, teamed up with a guy named Mike Little, who was in England, who we had never met before, as many open source projects were. And I started hacking on what would become WordPress. According to Mullenweg, he never intended it to become a revenue generating project. He wanted to make it easier for people to publish their own sites and blogs, even if they lacked the technical know-how. By October 2014, WordPress was powering over 29,000 blogs from all over the world, including Mullenweg's, then the world's third most popular blog. This kind of success so early on earned him a job offer at CNET, a San Francisco based media company, where he started working as a product manager. While working hard at his job, Mullenweg also dedicated a fair percentage of his time to WordPress. During his time at CNET, Mullenweg noticed that the company owned tons of domains from their acquisitions, with online.com being one of them. Mullenweg thought that this domain would be perfect for an even more accessible version of WordPress, where users could start a blog in a few clicks, no coding required. As great as this idea was, sadly, CNET just wasn't on board because it, like the rest of the industry, didn't see the potential that online blogging held. Back then, traditional publications and journalism were considered legitimate sources of news and compared to them, blogging just fell short. However, Mullenweg wasn't one to give up. After wrapping up his projects with CNET, he quit his job. And alongside a few of his fellow WordPress developers, the young entrepreneur started investing all his time and energy into his new startup, which he named Automatic. The idea was to essentially create a company which uh, tried to build and flourish from the open web and open source. So we wanted, I wanted to create a place where I could work on open source full time and all the other developers of WordPress and others could, could benefit from it. We also wanted to create a company, a for-profit, that was paired with a nonprofit, where each one would be stronger than either would be on its own. So I think nonprofits can do awesome things. I think for-profits can do awesome things. But when WordPress, we have essentially WordPress.org, which is open source software, which is not owned by Automatic. We have Automatic, which creates services for WordPress.org. And then there's a huge ecosystem outside of that. Working at CNET, Mullenweg saw how the platform battled with spam bots on sites that allowed comments, giving him an idea for his first commercial product. He decided to develop Akismet, a spam filter that you could use for WordPress and other blogging software. The idea was that the Akismet plugin would go through the comments on your blog and filter out spam using a complex algorithm that Mullenweg developed. Over the years, Akismet has caught more than 523 billion spam comments from blogs and websites of all kinds. So it's safe to say that this product was one of Automatic's biggest successes. When Automatic officially launched in 2005, Akismet was its first product. Next came WordPress.com, initially launched to a limited audience. The difference between the open source version of WordPress and this one was that it fell under the umbrella of Automatic, which meant that the company handled hosting, leaving the users to focus on their content, a big selling point. However, despite the genius idea behind Automatic, the company had to go through some growing pains initially. One of the biggest challenges that the company faced from the tech world was the fact that it was creating a commercial counterpart to an open source project, which people could already use and modify for free. While this kind of model is now super popular with other open source software, such as Docker and GitHub, back then the idea was still relatively new and people were a little apprehensive about it. The second problem was that when Automatic launched, their first ever employee resided in Ireland. 
Then they had people working from places like Vermont and Texas, while Mullenweg himself was in San Francisco. Now, this was back when the idea of remote work was not mainstream. So people had a hard time believing that this kind of work model would ever prove to be productive. But even at the young age of 21, Mullenweg proved to be a capable leader and managed to beat the odds with his excellent team of developers who worked and contributed to his ideas from all over the world, bringing in new perspectives. And to be honest, the model just made a whole lot of sense for a project that was so community driven and diverse, allowing Mullenweg to hire talented people from all over the world to work with him while maintaining constant company communication online. The company has been entirely remote since 2005 and with 1700 employees and the kind of success that Automatic has experienced, it's safe to say that the model has worked out for everyone involved. Now that this part of the challenge was over, Mullenweg knew that he had to bring someone else on board to raise funding for his venture. Tech writer and WordPress early adopter Om Malik put him in touch with a Yahoo executive named Tony Schneider, who already had experience with a few startups, including a successful exit from Yahoo. The two automatically clicked, and Mullenweg quickly brought Schneider in as the company's CEO. Want to create a website for your business? Use Wishpond's website builder. Effortlessly create mobile-friendly websites from one of the available templates for every industry. But that's not all. You can get a team of marketing experts to work on increasing your sales. Click on the link in the description to learn more. The next part was to make money. Currently, the company generates revenue of $155 million annually. But getting here wasn't easy. Naturally, the easiest way for a blogging and commerce platform is through ads. However, Automatic didn't take that route. Why? Because when they asked their users if they were okay with ads, only 20% of them agreed. And because WordPress was a community-driven project, Schneider decided to give the people what they wanted, even if that meant working a little extra hard to make money. The company then started working on a subscription-based model and targeting small businesses and enterprises with WordPress VIP, which included better support, security, and technical guarantees than the regular paid plans. They started developing new plugins and features, depending on what their customers needed to grow their sites. Each new feature had its own business model and a target audience that would pay to use it. As their users grew, so did their revenue. Today, Automatic makes most of its money by selling subscriptions that go hand in hand with WordPress, such as WooCommerce, an e-commerce platform, Jetpack, a customization and security plugin, and enterprise WordPress for businesses. As far as WordPress.com, it has a freemium model supported by ads along with a subscription-based model that's ad-free, making it a win-win situation for everyone. Automatic has found pretty tough competitors in other cloud-based web development services like Wix, Squarespace, and Shopify in recent years. But while all these platforms have taken the same idea that Automatic started with, they've narrowed it down to specific niches, which significantly reduces their use cases. On the other hand, Automatic has developed its software to be used by all kinds of people. This is why, even without a proper marketing department, compared to websites like Squarespace or Wix, Automatic has managed to stay relevant with WordPress even decades down the line. 2014 proved to be a big year for Automatic after the company raised $160 million in funding, the only money that the company had received since 2008. This was also when Mullenweg finally decided to take on the role of CEO again, replacing Schneider. My big learning under Tony was that by changing code, I can affect that part of the program, but by changing people, you can affect the world, said Mullenweg in an interview. Over the years, the company has acquired several other smaller companies to improve their services and overall user experience. With acquisitions like WooCommerce, the company could tap into new markets. One of the most famous acquisitions by the company was in August 2019, when Automatic acquired microblogging and social networking platform Tumblr for an estimated $3 million. That seems really low. $3 million? No way. No way. $3 million? Never. Anyway, moving on. 
As of now, WordPress has a market share of 65% when it comes to content management systems. And because of this dominance over the market, Automatic has managed to raise more than $985 million in their funding over 13 rounds, with their latest one taking place in February 2021 for a valuation of $7.5 billion. So, what does the future hold for Automatic? Well, Mullenweg has no plans of stopping anytime soon, and he believes that one day, WordPress will reopen the web by disrupting the dominance of platforms like Facebook. In the CEO's own words, he wants 85% of the world's websites to be powered through his open source content managing system. Yeah, I think we can take it from 28 or not 29% to something more in sort of the 80, 90% range. At the same time that the web is gonna to continue to grow as another six and a half billion people come online. Having emerged from the open source WordPress project, Automatic was a pioneer in remote work and open source software commercialization. Through the development and acquisition of WordPress plugins that extend the functionality of the blogging platform, the company has managed to build itself into a holding company for these diverse yet related businesses that support the world's most used CMS. That's a wrap for our breakdown of Automatic. What do you think of their ambition to reopen the web? Do you think they'll achieve their desired market share? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. I'll see you next time. Until then, bye.